Daniel is perfectly placing things, you know, just so. so I can see that. Today I'm talking to Robin Mulry about her new work. There are things that we come in contact, these are materials mm -hmm. we come in contact with, you know, almost every minute of our day. Mm -hmm. um, and as um, disconnected as this may sound, the way I think of these are, um, are pieces that are, that are about being human. Um, mm -hmm. Where I'm, I'm trying to understand or see or interpret um, what, it, what it feels like in different mm -hmm. states of being human and having emotion. Um, in kind of uh, maybe a little bit of a sci-fi way, I think we're, we're entering, I don't know how long this will be, but kind of a post-human age where mm -hmm. there's going to be more robots than people on Earth pretty soon. And these are all these logical beings that mm -hmm. don't have a remote understanding. We can't program understanding of what it feels like to feel. I think one thing that people often have a hard time figuring out and looking at artwork is how does the artist arrive at the decisions they make? And it's, uh, I'm wondering in this case, is there anything you can say about some of the choices you made here in terms of materials, in terms of color, in terms of uh, um, metal versus, uh, mm -hmm. versus the various <laughs> cementitious products you've used here? Yeah, and, and as a kind of as a starting point, um, a lot of this is is not planned or intended per se. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a framework that I work from. Mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to happen, so it's more it's than, improvised. Um, it's improvised. Improvised, and, and I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Right. Um, so I, in working with mortar, it can be very strong, mm -hmm. right? Um, I wanted cracks to come through. And um, so to do that, I needed something that would allow me, allow some flexibility in that surface. Mm -hmm. um, and it just happened to work pretty easily to, to put these on stretched canvas nice. and then work from um, this, you know, raw industrial material mm -hmm. or um, construction material. So this is, you know, Home Depot special um, stucco paper. Mm -hmm. So it's got a black paper behind, you know, this color brownish paper in the middle. Mm -hmm and then the wire on top, um, which allows the stucco to adhere. Um, but if I put it on not too thick, then it won't form a surface that can't be broken. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think one of the things that I, that I wanna show and wanna see happen is complication. Um, mm -hmm. and, and some of that I make happen by hammering it um, some of it happens just by moving it around. Some of it happens in the drying process. Um, but the material itself, again, I want it to be things that we come in contact with every day. Um, because, um, so there are some times where, where something breaks and, you know, I'll adhere it back on with roof or cement. Mm -hmm. um, well, you probably want, I mean, you, you want you to use things that we come in contact with because you're, these are all about being human or without a, um, without a visual reference to the human body. So you have to, you know, I think maybe, maybe just the fact that these are, these are things we come in contact with or you know, they, uh, that they become stand-ins for us. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I mean, we've, we have built ourselves into this, right? I mean, we literally sleep inside these walls. We walk on these floors. Um, it, it's not to say the natural world isn't around us, but there is something, you know, this is a uniquely human material. Mm -hmm. So with this piece, the layering is very apparent. So we can, we can see that there were decisions made, there were perhaps uh, Time, time between uh, different uh, sessions you had with it. Mm -hmm. How do you know when, you, when you're done, or do you? Yeah, um, I, I think in a way I know when I'm not done. Mm -hmm. um, no. And 
and, and that can take some time to know too. This mm -hmm. is this has um, three really distinct layers, as you say, that were all done um, over a series of about four months, mm -hmm. um, and just seeing the first one lay down and dry, and feel that it's incomplete, um, and then that darker layer. You know, one of the things that I do when I when I mix the mortar is I don't. There's no exact amount that I'm going to use, mm -hmm. um, so I keep multiple pieces out that I'm going to work on, and if I have got extra mortar, I'll lay more on mm -hmm. to a piece that needs it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of went through, you know, a couple of iterations with this, um, and this last one, you know, felt so different than the other two, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think I knew it was done. Um, it didn't need any more. Mm -hmm. So there's something I want to ask you also, which is that um, I mean, I, you know, I, I come to these and look at them. I'm a painter, so I, that's my that's my training. And um, but I, I don't get the feeling like you're. I mean, you you don't have you don't have the same training. You don't have the same background. Um, are these are these paintings to you, or are they are they uh, uh, sculptures? Are they objects? Uh, so, <laughs> great question. Um, I don't think of them as paintings. Um, I also don't think of them at this point as sculptural. Um, there's something important to me that, at least these pieces, that they're able to be hung on the wall in a more two-dimensional kind of way of viewing. Um, you know, one of the interesting things to me about them that isn't even on the, or within the frame itself, is the shadow that they cast below, yeah. um, and the kind of echo that that is of, of what's above. Mm -hmm. um, in this piece, which is, I mean, it's particularly thick, you've got shadows in, uh -huh. in the piece itself, too. Right, and, and a lot of them have that depth of layers behind, mm -hmm. you know, you can see through the hardware cloth here. Um, and in terms of color, you know, I wish I kind of had more articulate words to say about this, but it's felt important to me mm -hmm. that color isn't very present um, mm -hmm. in terms of the, a range of color in a piece. Obviously this one being the most, having the most color in mm -hmm. it, the most contrast. Um, but again, kind of wanting to get at that base substance of being human, of feeling, and though we can all be so different in life and be short or tall or um, there's something that's very common uh, there's something that we share feeling doesn't have uh, a different um, I mean it can be very different person to person but it's it's like it doesn't have different colors person to person I don't know that's one thing I'm curious about is who, who influenced you in doing this work? It's, uh, art doesn't come out of nowhere, yeah. um, a few exceptions. And um, you know, I'm just wondering, who, who, who is on your mind when you're working on these? Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, there are artists who have loved and loved. Mm -hmm. um, Anselm Kiefer is mm -hmm. definitely one. I think maybe that would be the most related in terms of kind of texture of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, you know, his work often has both um, a real rough and hard and destroyed mm -hmm. part to it mm -hmm. and something that's incredibly soft mm -hmm. and sensuous. Mm -hmm. um, another artist that I love is Rothko. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in his work, what draws me and keeps me in is that feeling and emotion, mm -hmm. um, and kind of how that changes just inside myself standing in front of one of his works. Mm -hmm. um, there's a younger guy out in New York whose work I really appreciate, um, Hugo McLeod. Mm -hmm. He's also working with industrial materials. He came from industrial design and metal, um, so he uses a lot of metal. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it, you know, kind of like what interests me of finding beauty in places that are overlooked or in material that seems so every day mm -hmm. um, that we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. um, 
another piece, um, I don't know a lot of her work, uh, is Susan Rothenberg's Wishbone. Mm -hmm. um, and some of what just kills me in art is when there's this strength and fragility at the same time in the same piece. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had no, you know, in a way, no intention of making that when I've made these, but in a kind of really funny way, they are both strong. I mean, these are, you know, pretty mm -hmm. heavy material, yeah. and yet they're incredibly fragile, mm -hmm. um, because pieces will break off if they're hit a particular way, yeah. or if there's, you know, wire standing out here and you set yeah. it down. Um, so it kind of has some of that strength and fragility. In yeah, it's but just, you know, so something, you know, there are things where you could hurt yourself touching. Yeah. And then, and then there's a kind of tenderness, or seeming tenderness in the way uh, surfaces are applied. Mm -hmm. so. so where were you born? Where did you grow up? I was born in Santa Cruz, California, um, and grew up in Soquel, which is a little kind of rural area of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Grew up on the creek um, and was outdoors most of the time as a kid. Um, yeah. So when, when the kids were little, I was just bored out of my mind and, and busy all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, about when they got three and I started to have a little life again in my own space and mind, I, I felt like that, you know, like Yates, like I went outside because there was a fire burning in my head. Um, I had to go, to go create. Mm -hmm. um, and... And I was spending so much time on the ground, so much time on sidewalks, you know, mm -hmm. leaning up against buildings, um, you know, whatever it is with little kids, things breaking all of the time, um, that that it, I think, gave me a different um, sense of scale, mm -hmm. you know, to be to be down low again um, and see things differently. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I've got a lot of other time that I'm caring for kids and can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I work part time and, and in a way that I think a lot of people couldn't understand, um, mm -hmm. like time is this, time is this very fluid thing, but it's also, um, something that I use to really, um, go after what I want. And, and so mm -hmm. if I know I've got three hours, mm -hmm. I'm going to have three hours, I'm going to get there ready to move at that beginning and use up the last second that I have, because um, it just, it's like what I need. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a practitioner of Zen, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And does that, can you relate that at all to the uh, work? Yeah. Um, Are you relating <clears throat> that to, to your path and making decisions, or hanging out with these, or being <clears throat> sort of the faith you need to just sort of get get through them uh, if, even when they're not when you don't you've lost the thread or something or I, I think probably both of what you said yeah for sure to you know like the question before of um, how do you know when something's done mm -hmm. well I, I don't I more know when it isn't done mm -hmm. that's more of the, the kind of gut feeling mm -hmm. and to trust okay it's not done and mm -hmm. I don't know what to do mm -hmm. um, but something will happen um, mm -hmm. And, and it's not this active, okay, what needs to go here? Like, should this, you know, mm -hmm. it's more sitting and waiting for whatever it is to come. Mm -hmm. um, I think also, for me, in once, once one of these is made, trying to sit with it and understand it, um, and understand what is it that, that I experience from it, what, what might be um, kind of coming coming into being in it, and just using that observer piece, where I both feel it, but I'm also trying to observe it. I guess given, given that, that some of these are, are about somewhat particular emotions, or, they, or that they, that's what they, that's your association with them, um, is, is that from the outset with that piece, with a particular piece, or does that just sort of accrue as you're, as um, you're working? So, Sometimes the kind of sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mm -hmm. So some of the pieces um, I have distinctly kind of been in and thinking of mm -hmm. um, something in particular, and again without putting a constraint of trying to express that, but just being in that mm -hmm. um, and then seeing what happens. And other times, um, no, I'll be 
just in the studio and mix mortar and get my hands in there and um, and kind of feel my way into what's becoming. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I more think of these as things that become mm-hmm. rather than things that I make. Um, if if that mm-hmm. distinction makes sense, there's some some pieces that I feel distinctly they're done, mm-hmm. um, and then others. This being one of them, when I felt it was finished, I was kind of still a little um, unsatisfied. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so there's things added to it over a couple of months mm-hmm. um, from different mixes of mortar that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was still, you know, becoming a night. Mm-hmm. Have any of them happened uh, um, more quickly than you wanted? Like, um, maybe have you had the experience of, of making one and um, working on one, thinking you're settling in for a long, uh, a long, uh, um, <coughs> Experience, you say, uh-huh. and then suddenly it's it tells you it's done, and you know, some disappointment. Or yeah, I guess uh, so. The the three D one mm-hmm. um, on becoming three D. So that one, maybe I had that experience, and and I was thinking that I would crack that one, mm-hmm. um, and then this, you know, this happened, right. um, and I let it dry. Uh, I, I, I can't crack it. Mm-hmm. Now it will. It still over time develops some, mm-hmm. you know, little cracks from drying. I don't know that I would say disappointment though. Mm-hmm. Kind of just a bit of a surprise. Yeah. It makes me think a little bit about parenting also. Just um, you know, ideas, and then and then and then there's what happens. And yeah. Oh.